first part of this video tutorial, I will introduce you to some basic and advanced features that will allow you to DJ with live and a MIDI controller. We'll start to import slide samples to a new session, play with the two live decks, automate the samples thanks to the launch section, play with performance and DJ effects, and we'll finish by connecting a physical MIDI controller to Ableton Live thanks to the MIDI map feature. Let's first open a new live session. We'll start by importing some samples into it. The samples we use for this tutorial part comes from the Loopmasters artist series The Next Man. As you can see, the album delivers a variety of formats and will focus on Rex files, as this format allows you to change the tempo of the music without lowering the quality of the sound. Let's first import some drum sounds. Just select them and drag and drop into a first audio slot. The principle of live is very simple. When you launch a sample, it will start to play when the current playing samples has complete the bar or the selected quantization length. Default is one bar, but we'll set the quantization to two bars to understand better what happens. Now, we want to mix the drums together. To do so, we'll first move some drum samples into a second slot using the mouse, the command or control key to select some of them, or the shift key. Let's drag and drop our selection into another slot. As for any DJ set, we need two decks that Ableton Live provides. Click on the A or B button to assign the slot to the deck A or to the deck B. To DJ we also need a crossfader that is located under the master volume and will allow us to mix deck A and deck B together. And to complete our DJ setup, we need to assign the cue to a different output than the speaker's output. Click on the I.O. button to do so and assign the right output. Obviously, your sound card must have a minimum of four outputs to do so in order to be able to monitor the cue with a different output than the one used for the master. Most of the sample collections offer a bunch of variations that fit well together. It's the case for the two guitar loops we have here. We'd like to play them one after the other, without launching them manually or without creating a new sample containing them both. Ableton Live solved the problem with the launch section and automated the playback of the clips. Let's first import the two samples into a new slot. No need to create a new track, as Ableton Live knows the file type you are about to import and will create the right track by its own. Click on the clip you'd like to automate. On the clip property, click on the L button, standing for Launch. It displays the Launch section. Clicking on the Follower row will display the next playback action for the clip. Many follow actions are available. In our case, we want to link the two guitar samples as if it was one single loop. So, for the first guitar samples, we'll select Next. Once this sample has finished to play, the next guitar sample will then start. For the second guitar sample, we'll select Previous. As a result, the two samples will play one after the other. As you can see, Ableton Live displays the currently playing clip and shows which clip is going to play next. Now, something important. The cycle displays the position of the clip's playback. In our case, we can see that our clip is not playing until the end since it's been automated. Why? 
Ableton Live displays the amount of bars and beats of a clip. Our guitar samples contain 8 beats. Also, the time signature of the session is 4-4. If we look at the launch section, the follow action time displays 1, meaning that it will play 1 bar only. However, 8 beats in 4-4 time signature means that our guitar clips has a duration of 2 bars. As a result, we need to set the follow action time to 2 bars, so the samples plays until the end. As we can see and listen, the guitar samples are now playing to the end. The launch section is also a great inspiration tool to listen to a full commercial album or find out some great combinations of samples. Let's add more drums and import some musical phrases from the sample album The Next Man. Let's select all the samples and choose the follow action Any. The playback of the clips will then be randomed. Also, the clips will play two bars, so we listen to more content. Ableton Live delivers a huge variety of performance and DJ effects. To import an effect, click on the effect icon on the left side of the screen. Go to the Audio Effect folder. Select the effect the most adapted for your sound. Then drag and drop to the desired slot or to the master. Here's a bunch of effects I've previously imported to the drum slot. It's obvious that DJing with a mouse is not the best option. There are many physical controllers on the market that are dedicated to Ableton Live. For instance, the Akai APC20 and APC40 that physically replicates the Ableton Live interface. There's also the Innovation Launchpad or the VSTAX VCM600 which is great to DJ with Ableton Live. Ableton Live includes a huge variety of virtual control surfaces that allow you to use your device instantly with no manual setup required. Unfortunately, I don't own any of these MIDI controllers built especially for live, so I will be using my Korg microcontroller that I will assign thanks to the live fantastic feature, the MIDI map. This feature will allow me to assign intuitively any knobs, sliders, pads, or any power meters of my MIDI controller to the Ableton Live interface. To assign a physical power meter of your MIDI controller to the Ableton Live's interface, first click on the MIDI button. The interface displays in blue all power meters that can be assigned. On the left side of the screen, the window MIDI mappings lists the various controls that have been mapped. To start, I want to assign a slider of my microcontroller to the live crossfader. Let's click on the crossfader first and move a slider of my microcontroller. As you can see, the crossfader is now assigned to my physical slider. Let's exit the MIDI map feature and we can see that the crossfader now moves along with the slider. Back to MIDI mapping, we'll now assign the master volume to another slider. As you can see, Ableton Live allows you to choose a mean and max value for the selected parameter. In order not to overload the master, 
I will limit the max value to 0 dB. As a result, when the slider will be at its highest position, the master volume will never be higher than 0 dB. Let's repeat the operation with the tempo. As we are working with Rex files, it can be interesting to control the track tempo. Again, we can set a min and max tempo value for the session, which is convenient, as the default tempo range goes from 20 to almost 1000. This is actually very imprecise. Depending on the music style of the session, always choose the best min and max tempo. Small tempo ranges allow you to control more precisely your tempo with a physical controller. Let's assign more parameters, just like clip lounge, track mute, stop clips, We can also assign one physical controller for two live parameters. This is what we'll do for the effects. Let's assign track 1 effect display to a pad and the track 1 effect on off to the same pad. As a result, hitting the pad will automatically display the effect and will activate it at the same time. Let's exit the MIDI map mode and test the configuration. <laughs> 